what's on the schedule for SHOT Show, and the Oryx chassis coming up. Mail Call Mondays is sponsored by Modular Driven Technologies. If you need a chassis system for your precision rifle, check out mdttac.com. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, although this is the Friday edition, and the reason for that is we have been slamming all week trying to get ready to depart for the 2019 SHOT Show. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, the SHOT Show is the shooting, hunting, and outdoor trade show held in Las Vegas at the end of January every year. And and we are here in Indiana, so tomorrow morning we are going to throw everything in the car and we are going to start driving and uh, we will take two days to drive cross country to SHOT Show. Now a lot of people ask me why do we drive instead of fly. I really actually could condense all of our videography equipment down and be able to actually fly with it, but it's a huge pain in the butt and honestly I like sitting in a car with my wife and actually seeing the sights as we cross the country. Uh, we have really very scattered schedules, so this actually gives us an opportunity to be very close together uh, without the distractions that you get in regular day-to-day -day life. Uh, so it's really enjoyable for us, and we'll take little side excursions along the way, and we'll stop off and, and see the sights here and there. Although at this point, we've made this trip more times than I can count, so we've seen most of the sites and most of the things along the trip. Uh, but it's always fun. So that is always a crush for us to get everything dialed in because uh, the SHOT Show actually takes a good chunk out of our schedules. Uh, so we don't have a lot of time to prep and to clean up and get everything squared away at the house before we depart. So that is why you didn't get a mail call Mondays on Monday and why you're getting it on Friday. Because at this point, I think I've got everything that I can get done, done, and we're going to be ready to roll. And we'll talk here in a minute about some of the highlights of booths that I want to go see at SHOT Show and products that I want to go see at the SHOT Show. Uh, but... I want to talk about this guy here really quickly. Uh, this is the Oryx chassis, and this one actually is designed for a Remington 700 short action. There will be some other options available coming soon, uh, but this is kind of exciting for me because this is a $400 price point chassis. Uh, so this is definitely in the budget range because it is less expensive than a lot of standard stocks. Um, it really got me excited because we are in the final stages of the planning for the Budget Precision 2. I think we're going to call it the Budget Precision 2019 rifle. Um, and that is a Remington-based product, but I really wanted to keep it in the lower price range. Uh, now, you guys know... Modular Driven Technology sponsors our show. Well, Oryx is kind of a spin-off of Modular Driven Technologies. They're trying to keep that, I believe, as a higher-end brand. And Oryx is going to be more on the budget line of things. Uh, but this does come from the uh, same company. It's just under a different banner. Uh, so it is a different website. You won't find this on the Modular Driven Technologies site. It is in its own uh, little area, and we will leave the link down below so you guys can check this out. Um, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and pop the box open. I have not even got into it to actually handle this thing. Uh, so you guys are getting my first impressions. So... Let's see what we have. I always hate how these boxes open. Here you go. So, right off the bat, let's go ahead and just get rid of this. It's got a decent weight to it without being extremely heavy. And there's Remington 700 short action right hand. That's all the hang tag says there. And we do have action screws. They kind of fell out of the package, but we'll get that in a minute. Uh, that kind of stuff does happen. So we'll set the action screws aside. 
And then just look this guy overall. Um, looking at right off the bat, it is definitely, I, I can see how we're coming in at that $400 price point, And that is not meant as a dig at all uh, because it is an attractive chassis. Uh, right off the bat, it feels nice. Uh, they've got a lot of the features from modular driven technologies, higher end chassis. And when you look at this, you can definitely see the modular driven technologies influence in this chassis. And they've done some really, really nice things here. Uh, so first of all, you do have an adjustable cheek piece. Uh, this is adjusted by set screws right here. So you do away with the added cost of a thumb wheel or any of that, that uh, most of us end up not really using a whole lot once we get the rifle actually dialed in for us. Uh, the length of pull is adjusted by a spacer system here. Again, that is a cost saving factor. So I will assume that you loosen up the two screws in the back and then slide spacers in and out uh, to get the length of pull that you need. Uh, one nice thing that I noticed right off the bat is there is a flush cup right back here for sling mounting, although uh, it is missing any kind of flush cups up here at the front. I really do wish that they had carried that forward and put a flush cup mount uh, here at the front of the stock. Although we do have M-Lock mounting points all along the bottom, so you can put an M-Lock rail or a M-Lock uh, flush cup in here somewhere. Uh, but I, I really do wish we would have actually had a QD. Uh, one other nice thing is you do have a threaded hole here. So if you did want to use a regular bipod stud, that is an option. Uh, so you can put a bipod stud in there and mount a standard Harris bipod without any modifications on there. Uh, it does come with uh, modular driven technologies grip. Uh, this is the same grip that I am using on most of our MDT chassis right now, and it has a really nice feel. It's very large palm swell. Uh, it doesn't quite have the same uh, or as much of a vertical feel to it as I prefer, uh, but I've learned to really like this grip because of the large palm swell. Uh, we do have thumb ramps on both sides of it, so it doesn't matter which side shooter you are. Uh, you've got a nice place to plant your thumb, uh, to get really good trigger control there and then still come up and run the bolt quickly. So I like that they carry that forward. And what that also does is it makes the back of the stock here nice and narrow. So it gives it a much lighter feel. And I think it also takes away a little bit of material. We kind of have this aluminum beam construction here. Uh, so from the fore end all the way back, and it would appear all the way back to the buttstock mounting. It looks like this is one piece uh, that's been machined from one piece of aluminum. And then the pistol grip mounting, trigger guard, and the uh, magazine, uh, magazine well, uh, appears to be another piece of metal. And then you have a steel uh, magazine latch here. This does accept AICS magazines. Uh, so either modular driven technologies own or accurate mags or AI mags, uh, those will work in this system. We have a very large recoil lug recess here. Uh, so we'll get some measurements on that when we do the full review of the Oryx. Uh, so overall, it's a really nice setup. Now we do have a really vertical uh, spot here on the butt stock. And I would assume that is to plant it in your shoulder. Uh, but I really like a little bit more area down here uh, to be able to ride a bag. I mean, you do have a flat up here, so you can use a taller bag and get it up into this area. And since I've switched over and use a pint size game changer quite a bit now, uh, that really shouldn't be an issue because the pint size game changer, when you turn it on end, is a very tall rear bag. Uh, so we'll see how that works when we actually get it out and start shooting it. Uh, it does use AR standard pistol grips, uh, and you do have a little bit of a space up here. So even some duckbill type grips may work, but I would recommend probably using just a standard flat top AR grip uh, if you swap it out from the MDT grip. Now, the backbone or the main portion of the chassis is aluminum. Uh, it does have a matte black anodized finish to it. Um, it is uh, very utilitarian. Uh, 
not unattractive in any way, shape, or form. I like this kind of anodized matte black, but it does tend to show wear rather quickly. Uh, anytime you have these matte black finishes, they will show wear. Now, uh, the, the plus side of it is um, they generally tend to hold paint very well. So when you clean them up, if you decide to paint this a custom color, uh, then it should hold the, uh, the finish very well. Uh, and that's one thing to minimize the cost. They do only offer these in a narrow uh, range of colors. Uh, I believe at the time we received this, this is the only color option. Um, I have not looked at the website today before we started rolling this, so there may be other color options available soon. Uh, this one has kind of an OD green finish to all the polymer sections and, of course, black uh, to the actual uh, aluminum sections. Now, speaking of the polymer, up here on the fore end, uh, we have two polymer scales, one on the right side, one on the left side, and, of course, they are separated down the middle uh, by the aluminum with the M-lock mounting points there. Uh, they are held on by four screws on either side, so they should be on there pretty solid. And there's no flex and no give uh, when I'm squeezing them. If I get right here in the middle and squeeze it really hard, I can see just a tiny bit of flex, but overall the fit and finish is very good on it. It's not something you're going to notice uh, while you're shooting it. Uh, they do have kind of a beaver tail shape. Uh, to the center portion here. It's kind of flared out and then has um, some serrations on it uh, to give you a little bit extra grip. So it does feel really good. And I think shooting, if you go to shoot offhand on it, I think it'll be very comfortable uh, because the plastic or the polymer pretty much covers anywhere that you're going to grip it. Uh, that's going to limit that um, heat sink effect that you'll have in the winter where the chassis tries to pull all the heat out of your hands. I've run into that before on some all aluminum chassis in really frigid cold temperatures. Um, also, uh, if your rifle's sitting out in the sun, uh, then you're less likely to pick it up and really burn the crap out of yourself uh, on black aluminum if the sun shining down on it. So it's kind of nice that most of the places your body is going to contact the chassis uh, is covered by a polymer. You're not grabbing a hold of bare aluminum. Now, that's really about as far as we can go without actually getting this guy mounted up on a rifle and uh, taking it out and shooting it. It does feel very rigid. Uh, there's really no no twisting there. Uh, we have a really nice large inlet uh, for the trigger, so it should accept a pretty wide range of triggers. Uh, we always try to put the uh, Extreme Shooting Mod 22 in here because that is the largest trigger that we have at this point, uh, just to see if that guy will fit. Uh, the trigger guard is nice and large, so gloved hands should be able to get in there. Additionally, if you run anything like the new uh, Timney Calvin Elite triggers that have the replaceable shoes, uh, you should have plenty of room in there for those. Uh, the mag release, uh, these mag releases are not my favorite. I wish they would have flared the mag release out a little bit more uh, because it is flat right up underneath here. Getting in there and quickly changing mags uh, it's not going to be as easy as some of the eared mag releases where you can just hit it with your trigger finger. The flip side of that is this mag release is going to be more difficult to accidentally engage. Um, and in precision rifle competition, uh, usually stages are 10 rounds, 12 round stages. They usually design them so that you are not having to do a speed reload on a bolt gun. Um, so it's really not that big of a deal. And when you get into things where you're running uh, just an extra couple of rounds, either using a, an extension, a magazine extension, or a two-round holder on the side, usually ends up being quicker uh, than changing a mag, reinserting a new mag, and then going. Uh, at least that's what I've found through my experience. Um, you guys may have a different opinion on that. If, if you do, eh, go ahead and drop it below. The uh, machining on the chassis looks very nice. I'm only seeing a couple of spots where I'm seeing machine marks, but this is a very early copy of it. Uh, so generally what we see with these kind of products is as they go along, the machining gets more and more refined as they settle on the tooling and get some better things lined out. Uh, one thing I uh, 
failed to mention uh, that I'll mention it now is they did a really neat uh, setup here where they've got a groove cut down the spine of the rifle. And what that's for is the uh, sear that sticks out on the bottom of the cocking piece uh, on the bolt. Uh, this will allow the bolt to run very close to the spine uh, without actually dragging that cocking piece on it. Uh, some uh, aftermarket actions will have a little bit longer cocking piece on there. Uh, some of the 60 degree throw actions that are still Remington 700 footprint end up sinking the bolt a little bit lower in the action, uh, or it's a larger diameter bolt. And so that little uh, cutout there uh, may help with uh, situations where you'll have that uh, cocking piece dragging across the top of the stock. I do have one rifle here uh, that it the action was not designed for the chassis, and the chassis wasn't designed for the action. It kind of works, but it does occasionally drag and leave a streak uh, down the spine of the chassis when I run the bolt hard. So overall, I think there is a ton of value here uh, for $400. It's really uh, pretty amazing what they're able to turn out. And I am really going to be anxious to get this on our budget precision build and uh, take it out to the range and beat it up a little bit and see how well it works. Uh, I think Oryx has done a really great job on it. Uh, so We'll be interested to see how it goes. If you guys have any questions or comments on the Oryx chassis, uh, if you're excited about it, if you want to get one for your rifle, or if there's something about it that you greatly dislike, please leave it in the comments section down below. Now we're going to switch over and we are going to talk about uh, SHOT Show and some of the booths that I think I'm going to try to hit. Now this is nowhere close to an exhaustive list. An exhaustive list would make this like an hour or two hour video. Uh, so I'm just going to run down some of them that are the highlights and this is in no particular order. I just pulled them out of my to-do list and slapped them in here. So uh, first we're talking about chassis. Uh, JP Enterprises is releasing a new chassis this year. We actually Actually should have one on the way to us as soon as they're finished, uh, but they are uh, trying to get everything ready for SHOT Show. They're obviously going to have the chassis there at SHOT Show, so we don't have one in our hands just yet. Um, but we will take a look at that. We'll talk to JP and we'll get their input on the new chassis and bring that to you guys. Next up, we have uh, SIG and SIG Firearms and SIG Optics both have some really exciting stuff coming out uh, that should be at this SHOT Show. On the firearm side of the house, uh, SIG announced the MPX Copperhead, uh, which this appears to be a really awesome, super compact version of the MPX. I have wanted an MPX for a while. I have held off on buying an MPX. Uh, this may push me over the edge because SIG continues to release it in both SBR version, uh, which of course does require the tax stamp and all that fun stuff, and also in a pistol version uh, with a new pistol brace on it. Uh, so we'll get down there and take a look at that. Hopefully they will have them out there at industry day at the range and I will get a chance to shoot it and actually uh, see how well that works. So the next lineup in the SIG firearm side of things is they just released the P320X Compact. Uh, and the X Compact is carries over a lot of the stuff from the X5 and the X Carry, but now you have a 15 round shorter grip. So it's kind of like SIG's uh, entry into that Glock 19 size pistol category. Uh, and I found that that really ends up being the best all-around carry gun for me is that Glock 19 sized gun. And so while I do have a P320 full and I have one that does have the 17 round um, X grip on it, I want to see really how this uh, X compact feels and uh, how well it's set up for uh, the optics uh, they do have an optics carry plate on it, so you can swap it over and put a Romeo dot sight on it very easily. So I will be really interested to check that out. Now on the optics side of the house, they should have their new BDX binos out there. Hopefully they will have them at industry day at the range so I can actually uh, lay some things out on the range and uh, see how far they will reliably return. Uh, but these things in some of the early testers that have been playing with them 
have brought back that they are ranging well over two miles. So we'll see how that pans out. Uh, that in a binocular really makes it a all around tool because I found uh, in tactical rifle competition, spotting with binoculars uh, really tends to ease a little bit of eye strain. It's a little bit easier to carry those around. Um, and if you are on a range where you can actually see impacts down range, uh, very often binoculars work really well. So laser rangefinder and binoculars uh, makes one tool that will really do a wide variety of jobs very well. Uh, next, we'll talk about Glock. Now, Glock, I am certain, will be at Industry Day at the range, and I'm certain they will have the 43X and the 48 out there. Now, this is a precision rifle-oriented channel, so you guys may not care about those at all, uh, but I have a Glock 43, and I have to pretty much always have a extension on the 43 uh, to be able to accurately shoot it. Uh, if not, then my pinky's dangling off the bottom of it. I can still shoot it at contact ranges effectively, uh, but it is not ideal for me. With the extension on it, I can still conceal it very, very well, as long as I'm not trying to carry it in an ankle holster. And so I really want to see if the 43X is worthwhile. Now, on the flip side, the 48, I have almost no interest in the 48 at all. Um, I... I can't see an issue or a reason why I would carry a 48 instead of a 19. Uh, but I'm going to go out there, I'm going to handle it, I'm going to compare it, and I'm going to see if maybe that changes my mind and maybe we'll come back and talk to you guys about it. Uh, but that is my main purpose at going to the Glock booth. Now, back on the show floor, we will be going to Arcteryx and uh, running through and taking a look at some of their 2019 lineup. They have released some new pieces in their Leaf lineup and some updates to some old pieces. Um, as you can tell, uh, I am a big Arcteryx fan. Uh, I'm wearing a Naga hoodie Gen 2 right now. Uh, so their clothing has kept me comfortable out on the range and uh, in a variety of different situations for quite some time now. I was pretty much decked out in Arcteryx head to toe uh, when we had our little trek through the Peruvian Andes. Uh, so they are uh, a really high-end gear manufacturer and I really enjoy their clothing. So we'll speed through there and take a look and see if there's anything that we want to really uh, bring to you guys. Uh, next, we'll talk about Shield Sights. Um, Shield, unfortunately, we weren't able to get the uh, Shield RMS review out before SHOT Show. We have done a very long-term, very exhaustive review on the Shield RMS, and uh, we actually killed it. Uh, we did exactly what they told us not to do, which was dump it in water. Uh, but I felt it was an important test because it is something that is possible to occur uh, to a law enforcement officer or to an armed citizen. Uh, so I really wanted to see if the thing got dunked into a puddle and pulled out quickly, if it would live, and it didn't. Uh, however, S.H.I.E.L.D. is releasing the RMSW, which is the waterproof and beefed up version of the RMS. Uh, they also have the RMS Compact, uh, which is more designed for those Glock 43 and Glock 48 size handguns. Uh, so we'll speed by there. We'll take a look at the new waterproof version and hopefully we'll be able to get a hold of one and bring you guys an update to the RMS video. And once we get back from shot, it shouldn't take us very long before we have the RMS video out. Uh, the article is already almost completed. We just have to do some photography on that before it's done. Then we'll talk about Badger Ordnance. Badger Ordnance just announced their Condition 1 modular mount. So this is a modular scope mount where you can uh, put various accessories on it and move things around. Uh, Badger Ordnance always brings out very, very high quality equipment. Uh, they've been used in the Marine Corps, in the Army for a good time. Uh, so really, I'm excited to see modularity in a scope mount, sometimes that ends up being a bad thing. Sometimes that ends up being a very good thing. Uh, we've seen good things with the modularity of, for instance, the spur improved scope mount system. Uh, so hopefully uh, Badger will be bringing out a really great product and we'll go talk to them, find out why they're bringing it out and uh, what advantages it gives you over a regular mount. 
Uh, next, we'll talk about Magneto Speed. Magneto Speed is releasing their Rifle Cool, which is a chamber and barrel cooling device. Uh, this has become all the rage in precision rifle competition, uh, much to my chagrin, uh, because I wear amplified hearing protection. Uh, and there have been several times where I've been standing behind the firing line and thought I was being attacked by a swarm of mosquitoes because of that buzzing noise in my ear. And no, it's it's all the barrel coolers behind the line. And what a barrel cooler basically does, it takes ambient air and it blows it through your chamber and down your barrel in order to help cool that down. And it's claimed to uh, give you better consistency in your shots and better barrel life uh, since ideally the next stage you would be starting off with a barrel that's cooled back down to ambient temperatures instead of one that is still relatively hot. Uh, so I'm going to be really interested to see Magneto Speed's take on it. Magneto Speed uh, produces some very high-end electronics uh, so it should be a pretty neat little item now that they actually have the production version done. Uh, we declined taking a look at the pre-production versions and the prototypes because they weren't quite finished and I didn't know what we could really bring to the table on that. Uh, so once the production version is done, we'll be able to do a full review on that. Uh, next, we'll talk about Faxon Firearms really quickly. Um, I just got the press release yesterday that Faxon Firearms has released their FX-19 pistol. Uh, this is their take on the Glock 19 pattern handgun, uh, although not using Glock 19 parts. It appears to be a um, polymer 80 type frame. That's what the aesthetics of the frame look like. And uh, Faxon's own slide and barrel, and they have two different versions. Uh, one that is going to come with suppressor height sights and a threaded barrel, and one that's going to come with standard sights and a plain barrel. Uh, so I'm hoping that they will have them at industry day at the range so that we can shoot those. Um, but if not, then we will make sure we get by their booth and take a look at those. Uh, it's really interesting to me right now because it seems like the Glock 19 and 17 pattern uh, seems to be making the, the uh, rounds for boutique uh, type handguns. Uh, so smaller manufacturers like Gregos Precision, Faxon, and there are a couple of other ones seem to be standardizing on that pattern for aftermarket parts and for semi-custom pistols. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see as we go forward through the year how many companies also jump on that uh, same trend and start producing uh, more Glock slides, barrels, I'm sorry, Glock pattern slides, barrels, and frames. Uh, now, I'm a big fan of the Glock 19 and the Glock 17s. They just work. Uh, I'm not a Glock fanboy. They do have some drawbacks. Um, they are not to the same quality level as a high-end 1911 or even some of the other striker fire pistols out there, but they are a good midline budget. They are pretty much the pickup truck of the striker fired handguns. Uh, so the fact that this is a time-tested design now uh, that is making its way into the uh, aftermarket, it's kind of exciting for me to see because you're now at the point where you can build a Glock pattern handgun without using almost any Glock parts at all. Uh, we do have a little bit of a piece that we're going to talk about with my experience building a Polymer 80 uh, P940 compact frame up into a firing handgun. And uh, that will be coming sometime uh, late January, early February. So stay tuned for that. Um, next, uh, we'll talk about Thunder Beast Arms. They just released a new bipod. Uh, this is going to be a really interesting design. Uh, it kind of takes a little bit of the Atlas and a little bit of the Harris and kind of combines them all together. Uh, I can't wait to get my hands on it, play with it a little bit, and see where it's going to line up in this huge array of bipods we have. Now, to round things out, we'll talk about uh, modular-driven technologies. Again, we spent enough time talking about the Oryx chassis in relation to them, um, but modular-driven technologies also is now bringing a new bipod under their banner. Uh, so we will be interested to check that out and uh, bring you guys the latest updates on that. So that's just a really quick overview of a handful of the 
huge number of booths that we are going to visit during the SHOT Show. Uh, what I need you guys to do is make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell icon and you will be notified as we release videos throughout the week. I'm going to try to get selected videos up through the week and then as soon as we get back we're going to push out all the rest of the videos. That's it for this Mail Call Mondays. If you guys have liked the show please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you click that subscribe button and then punch the little bell next to it. If you guys have any questions or comments over anything we've covered leave it in the comments section below or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. And until next time Get out and shoot. Now, for those of you that wanted to know what the knife was that I used to open the box, because people always ask, this is a Benchmade CLA, and it is an automatic, and it uh, is a very nice little compact knife. Uh, this has been my daily carry so far because it's nice and thin. Uh, it's got a really nice uh, deeper carry clip uh, so it doesn't pop out of my pants all that often. And here in Indiana, it is lawful for us to carry automatic knives. Uh, so it's a nice thing to carry around. Uh, it's just a really nice knife overall. It does have the ability to lock closed or lock open. Uh, so if you do do some hard work with it, you can lock the blade in the deployed position and not worry about folding up on your uh, fingers. Uh, that's just a really quick overview of it. If you guys want to see a full review on the Benchmade CLA, leave a comment down below and we will look at doing a full knife review video on this guy. I've been really happy with it so far. Uh, it's in my pocket most days.